In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning. And welcome to the Minor Basilican Shrine of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manavag. My dear friends, as we come together thanking God for all the blessings that we receive from Him, let us continue our prayers. Let us pray for one another and let us pray especially for those loved ones of ours who are sick and suffering. Let us also pray for the peace in our country and of the world. To make ourselves worthy of this holy celebration, once again, let us ask God's forgiveness for all the sins that we have committed. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly seen in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that always pondering spiritual things we may carry out in both word and deed that which is pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the letter of St. James. Do not complain, brothers and sisters, about one another, that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing before the gates. Take as an example of hardship and patience, brothers and sisters, the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Indeed, we call blessed those who have persevered. You have heard of the perseverance of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, because the Lord is compassionate and merciful. But above all, my brothers and sisters, do not swear, either by heaven or by earth, or with any other oath, but let your yes mean yes, and your no mean no, that you may not incur condemnation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is kind and merciful. The Lord is kind and merciful. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all my being. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. The Lord is kind and merciful. He pardons all your iniquities. He heals all your ills. He redeems your life from destruction. He crowns you with kindness and compassion. The Lord is kind and merciful. Merciful and gracious is the Lord, slow to anger and abounding in kindness. He will not always chide, nor does He keep His wrath forever. The Lord is kind and merciful. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so surpassing is his kindness toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he put our transgressions from us. The Lord is kind and merciful. Please stand.
Your word, O Lord, is truth. Consecrate us in the truth. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus came into the district of Judea and across the Jordan. Again, crowds gathered around him as he was, as was his custom. He again told them, the Pharisees approach him and ask, Is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? They were testing him. He said to them in reply, What did Moses command you? They replied, Moses permitted a husband to write a bill of divorce and dismiss her. But Jesus told them, Because of the hardness of your hearts, He wrote you these commandments. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, no human being must separate. In the house, the disciples again questioned Jesus about this. He said to them, Whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. At present time, one of the most attack institution is the institution of the sacrament of marriage. Why? It is because it is very, very hard kind of relationship. I may say that without God's blessing, this kind of relationship will not last long. Yes, without the sacramental grace of marriage, human relationship will not last long. And that is because the sacrament of marriage, family, is an institution wherein God's presence is very important. It is because it is a vocation, a call. And it is not only husband and wife that goes for themselves together. Why they knew each other? Why they love each other? Why they serve each other? It is because of the grace of God. God calls them to be one. God calls them to initiate 
that very sacred relationship that later on established a basic society we call the family. And that is why when Jesus was asked by those teacher of the law, by those Pharisees who are teachers at the temple, the question, is it lawful for a husband to divorce his wife? Actually, one-sided lang kapag tinignan natin, di ba? Only husband to divorce his wife. How about wife to divorce his husband? Which is already going on. Is this a one-sided? Maybe yes, because of the law of Moses. Only husband can write a bill against all divorce and submit it. And if you try to look back the history, you will only uh, be wondering, bakit ganon? Bakit yung lalaki lang? Kung ayaw na ng lalaki ang kanyang asawa, pwede niyang i-divorce. Kung nakakita yung lalaki na mas maganda sa kanyang asawa, pwede niyang iiwan. Kung may kasalanan ng babae, lalong-lalo na kapag kaaway niya ang kanyang manugang o ang kanyang biyanan, pwede siyang iiwan. Kapag talamak ang uh, babae sa bahay, hindi marunong mag-say ng ulam, ng pagkain, pwede siyang iwanan. Those are the provisions. But the main provisions is that when a woman is discovered to commit a relationship with another man, then that is another grounds for divorce. Our Lord actually did not answer the question, but instead asks them another question. Moses permitted a husband to write a bill of divorce and dismiss her because of the hardness of your hearts. Because of the hardness of your heart. Ibig sabihin, they don't mind God anymore. Ang tinitingnan na lamang nila yung convenience ng kanilang sarili. They did not return back to the beginning kung bakit they become husband and wife. Why did they ask for marriage? I think what was observed before is also valid until now. Why do we have a lot of divorce? Of course, not here in the Philippines yet. But there are a lot of people who like that this will be approved. And maybe some of you who are here It is really sad to know about that. As Catholic, as Christian. So Jesus returned back from the background of marriage. 
from the beginning of creation, God made the male and female. And for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother to be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, the human being must separate. Ito yun. Kaya, <laughs> siguro pag-isip-isipan bago magpakasal, kung ang dahilan sa inyong pagpakasal, dahil nabuntis na ang babae, just to save the face of your girlfriend, then it is not valid. Kung magpakasal ka dahil natatakot ka sa magulang ng babae o sa magulang mo, then it is not valid. Kung magpakasal ka dahil napilitan ka lang, then it is not valid. Those are hindrances of the sacrament of marriage. So why? Why ask for the sacrament if you cannot fulfill it? Better not. Personally, I will not advise, lalong-lalong na yung mga aksidente na mga relasyon, yung mga relasyon dahil convenient sa buhay, mayroong mag-alaga daw, then, maybe you can live together, but not the sacrament. Kung, if afterwards, na kapag hindi nyo na kaya, maghiwalay kayo. Kawawa yung mga kabataan. Kawawa kayo. Dahil kapag nakasal na kayo, mas lalong mahirap ang magpaano, lalong-lalo na sa simbahan. So if you are not sure to enter the sacrament of marriage, then do not enter. So that no problem later on. But the thing is that you will be committing something which is not allowed by the commandments of God. Because if you are not married, then you are committing fornication. You are committing adultery. You are committing the sin against the commandments of God. So mag-isip-isip tayo. Mag-isip-isip tayo. Dahil the sacrament of marriage is a revolution from the heart. Merong revolution yan. Merong awayan yan. And it is like Edsa. It is a revolution from the heart that needs more prayers, needs more the presence of God. Because in the sacrament of marriage, God is the center. God is the life. Because it is not you who choose you. Rather, it is God who chose you to become husband and wife. Please all stand. Husbands and wives here in God's creation of new life. Our intercessions today center around the needs of parents and children. For every intention we say, Lord, bless our families. Lord, bless our families. That the church should become true to her vocation of defending the integrity of marriage and of the family. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, bless our families. That government leaders and legislators may enact laws and policies that build families rather than destroy them. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, bless our families. That families broken by divorce or separation may find support and understanding from people in their communities. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, bless our families. That the examples of Mary and Joseph may give inspiration to families in living out their commitments. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, bless our families. That our deceased relatives and friends may enjoy the peace of God's eternal home. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, bless our families. In silence, let us now pray for our very own personal intentions. We include the intentions of this Mass, and let us pray for peace, not only in our country, the Philippines, but also especially in Ukraine and the whole world. God of love, you created us male and female to continue your work of creation. May our love for one another reflect your indwelling presence. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for true goodness we have received, the bread we offer you, fruits of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for true goodness we have received, the wine we offer you, Fruits of divine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Please stand. Pray, my dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. As we celebrate your mystery, O Lord, with the observance that is your, your due, we humbly ask you, that what we offer all for to the honor of your majesty may profit us for salvation to Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is really right and just, our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty an eternal God, through Christ our Lord. His death we celebrate in love, His resurrection we confess with living faith, and His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim.
Miss Neil. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of holiness. Make holy, therefore, the skills you pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and gave him thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate a memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have healed us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Socrates, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Throw him and wealth him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, be there to say,
deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Gracious we grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we might be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, Peace I love you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let, let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Please kneel. Let us now pray for the prayer for the elections. Let us pray that the forthcoming elections may truly reflect the will of the Lord who guides the destinies of nations. Let us pray together, deliver us, Lord. Deliver us, Lord from coercion, violence, and terrorism. Deliver us, Lord. From dishonesty, lies, and all distortion of truth. Deliver us, Lord. From bribery, graft, and all conspiracy for fraud. Deliver us, Lord. From threats, intimidation, and perverse language. Deliver us, Lord. 
Let us pray together. Bless us, Lord. Hear us, Lord. That conscience may always be our ultimate norm. Hear us, Lord. That the common good may always be our highest goal. Hear us, Lord. That human dignity may be respected all the time. Hear us, Lord. That the poor and the weak may always have the priority. Hear us, Lord. That genuine fear of God and love of neighbors may guide those who seek public office. Hear us, Lord. Let us pray. Shepherd of souls and Savior of the nations, politics is your gift to us, a call to serve others. May our political engagement for voters and candidates bring glory to your loving name and help us grow in holiness forever and ever. Amen. Please stand. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that we may experience the effects of the salvation which is pledged to us by this mysteries to Christ our Lord. Amen. I would like to ask, uh, to say thank you to Father Rodrigo for celebrating with us here. And uh, thank you very much for your presence, especially for your active participation and cooperation during this Mass. Let us continue praying for one another. And please include in your prayers the frontliners of the Minor Basilica of Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, especially our Dominican community here, our seminarians, our sacristan, our lecturer and commentator, our ushers, and Eucharistic ministers. Please include also our security guard, our uh, music ministry, and radio staff. So please uh, keep safe, enjoy the holiday that uh, God has given us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ascended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. We will now have the blessing of our sick brothers and sisters. Please remember the names of your loved ones who are sick. We will also bless your religious articles. Our hope is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. Let us pray. God, our Almighty Father, by your blessing, you give us strength and support in our frailty. Show we kindness toward our sick brothers and sisters, free them from all illness, and restore them to good health. Through the intercession of our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, so that in the sure knowledge of your goodness, they were grateful to bless your holy name. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For your religious articles. In memory of the mysteries of the life, death, and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, to the honor and glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Christ, Mother of the Church, Our Lady of the Rosary of Manawag, may all these rosaries, images, candles, oil, and other religious articles be blessed and made holy in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.